Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good to be in the presence of God this morning. Thank you for coming. If you are visiting for the first time, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. I want you to feel at home. This morning we are here to celebrate Jesus Christ together. Hallelujah. Some of you may know uh, one of my friend <clears throat> from Argentina used to come here. His name is Carlos Miranda and uh, we have studied together in Christ for the Nations uh, 1995 to 97 graduated together. Uh, Mira- uh, uh, Carlos went back to Argentina. He started a powerful ministry there. I'm so glad to have his son, younger son, uh, chose his dad's path uh, serving the Lord and he came to Christ for the Nations to study. Uh, Jose Miranda, Joshua. Actually, Joshua Miranda. Please stand up. Thank you for coming. God bless you. So he's a student, first year student at Christ for the Nations. And may the Lord uh, use him here and help him to study well and to serve the living God. That is the faithfulness of God that God chose uh, his younger son uh, to serve the Lord. And to thank God for him. So he will be visiting us periodically while he will be in Christ for the Nations. So let us thank God for his life. And glad to have our daughters back from uh, uh, college. So they will be going back this afternoon. Please uh, continue to pray for them. So this morning, let us uh, thank the Lord for this blessed time and uh, ask the Holy Spirit of God to uh, touch our life uh, with his presence. As you know, uh, our church is praying every day, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 5.30 to 7, uh, 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. So many of you are coming. If you are able to come, please come. It is a powerful time. Uh, spending time in the presence of God and God is doing great and mighty things and we are praying for so many things and if God willing uh, before the end of this service we will be uh, praying for some new families uh, they wanted to be a part of members of our church and we will be praying for those families we are calling them towards a friend and uh, you know pastors and the church will want to see you and uh, then your congregation will pray for you. And this is one of the prayer that you have been praying for Lord to send new families to the church. So this morning, sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude as the Holy Spirit to touch our life with his presence. So today's uh, sermon is titled as uh, Show Me Your Glory. Show me your glory. That's a phrase. A child of God must cry out on a daily basis. Lord, show me your glory. What is the glory of God? When you see the glory of God, you will not remain the same. You will be a different personality. Your outlook, your, your, your character, overall your life will be changed dramatically. So our cry as a child of God must be, Lord, show me your glory. We want to consume in your presence. We want to see that your supernatural power manifesting in our life. We want to see something extraordinary in our life. We want to experience something new. Exodus chapter 33, verse 17 and 18. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Please show me your glory. But the Lord, it was a, this, this chapter is a communication between. Moses and the Lord. The Lord revealed himself to Moses. And the Lord said, I know you by your name. Children of God, there is a living God who can understand everything about you, including your name. We are living in a world, people 
forget other people. They may not remember your name. They may remember for a period of time. But the Lord said, I have an eternal covenant with you, Moses. I can remember you by your name. Then Moses revealed himself towards the Lord and said, Lord, that is not enough for me. I want to get to know you more. I want to experience something extraordinary from you. And please show me your glory. I want to come close to you. I want to understand you. You remember Moses experienced a glimpse of God's glory when you read Exodus chapter 3. That's the reason Moses was attracted towards the presence of God. And he was an ordinary man. He was doing his own business and he was, uh, he was uh, uh, tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. And he saw something extraordinary he has never seen. That attracted him towards that. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 through 5. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flocks to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Children of God, we must be close to the presence of God. We must be close to Horeb where the presence of God has been revealed. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. That's what the Lord sent a glimpse of his glory to attract Moses towards the presence of God. He saw the bush aflame, but there is no, the bush is not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this. This was a great sight. The glory of God is not an ordinary sight. The glory of God is an exciting thing. And it is a supernatural thing. It was a great sight. Why the bush does not burn. That was his concern. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am God. Then he said, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off from your feet. For the place where you stand is a holy ground. So God wanted to reveal the holy presence of God to Moses. Children of God, our God is a loving God. He wants you to be close to him. He is attracting every individual to come close to God. And experience something different than you experience on a daily basis. So Moses saw a little glimpse of what the Lord can do. What is the glory of God? A child of God must understand what is the glory of God. The glory of God is the invisible qualities, character, or attributes of God displayed in a visible way. Let me tell you one more time. Glory of God is the invisible qualities. So when you say that I am, I have consumed, I have seen the glory of God, you are telling that I know the qualities of God. I know the character of God. I know the attribute of God. It is displayed in a visible way. God is willing to display, display his glory. Agape Church, you will pray for God's glory come down. It can come down right now. When you look for it, you will find it. 
the glory of god is the invisible qualities character or attribute of god displayed in a visible way and you can experience the glory of god in a visible way when moses asked the lord to show me your glory the same words verse 19 exodus chapter 33 verse 19 the lord gave him an answer and it explains what is the glory of god exodus chapter 33 verse 19 and he said i will make all my goodness pass before you and i will proclaim the name of the lord before you then he said i will be gracious to you whom i will be gracious i will have compassion on whom i will have compassion god explained what is the glory of god to moses otherwise the lord was telling my glory is the sum of all total of all these things he said it is that my glory is all the goodness of the lord when you experience the goodness of god you are under his glory He said it is all the power in the name of the Lord my glory is the power in my name and again he said all the graciousness of God even when i reveal my glory to my people my graciousness will come upon you again he said it will be the sum of all the compassion of the Lord hallelujah When you ask the Lord fill us with your glory what are you praying you are praying oh lord show us all the goodness of you and show us the nay the power that is vested in your name we want to experience that power and we are telling that oh lord show me your glory we want to see and experience your graciousness towards your people and again we are telling lord show us your compassion that is available for us that is the glory of god we are asking god to show his goodness we are asking god to show the power that is vested in his name we are asking the holy god to show us the graciousness of your presence and the compassion that is available for a child of god you need to understand when you ask the lord show me your glory what are you asking hallelujah when god send your glory you cannot stay the same you will be a different person when you understand the depth of his power when you understand the depth of his goodness when you understand the depth of the graciousness and the compassion of god that is the sum of the glory of god that is what moses asked the lord moses said lord i have seen you in a little glimpse I want to experience you more. Do you have that cry in your heart that I want to experience you more deeply, more dearly, more compassionately, more graciously? And I want to be a different person. Moses was an ordinary person. The Lord chose him for a divine purpose. and he had it on difficulties and he was not a person eloquent in even speech and god revealed to him one thing that if my reveal my glory to you you will no longer the same and you will be a different person the power will flow through your life the graciousness of god will be revealed to you and the compassion of god will follow you and the goodness and the power in my name will deliver you from all kinds of difficulties that's what the lord said i will let my goodness follow you I will reveal to you the power that is vested in my name. 
Moses said, that's what I'm looking for. Child of God, what are you and me looking for from the presence of God? Let us look at these qualities that the Lord has revealed. One, number one, the nature of God's goodness. I want to give you some beautiful scripture portion about the nature of God's goodness. Exodus chapter 43 verse 6. And the Lord passed, passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, Lord God merciful and gracious. Long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. That is one of the quality. God is, God is abounding in goodness and, and truth. Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you ask the Lord, Man, show me your glory, you are telling the Lord, show me your goodness. Let your goodness and mercy follow me all through my life. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Do you have that faith in you? I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is the purpose of my life. That is the reason God has sustained me. I want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Children of God, don't lose your faith. Be of a good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Are you willing to wait on the Lord this morning? Your prayers are being answered. God is a good God and his goodness will follow you. Psalm 107 verse 8 and 9. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. What is our responsibility? We must continually give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works of the children of men. And he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. So if you are hunger, to receive God's goodness. And he's going to fill you with God's goodness. So Moses cried unto God, show me your glory. And he was telling me that, Lord, fill my life with your goodness. When the Lord fill our life with his goodness, the people that is looking at you is going to see the goodness of the Lord in your life. The glory of the Lord has been revealed to you. So my goodness will pass before you. The secondly, the Lord said the power in the name of the Lord. Do you remember, do you believe that there is power in his name? Proverbs 18, 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Everybody say strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. There is no safe place in this world. You will never get safety in this world. But there is a safer place when you are consumed under the glory of God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and you can go to his presence and you can be consumed in his presence and you will be never destroyed by the enemy. There is power in his name. When God reveals his glory, his power has been revealed. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him, talking about Christ, and give him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Hallelujah. 
At the name of Jesus, every name should bow. Of those in heaven and those on earth. And those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is the Lord. Even the Taliban will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. There is no other name. When you ask the Lord to Lord, reveal your glory, you are crying unto God, saying that Lord, reveal your power that is vested in the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Now, nor is there salvation in any other name. For those is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name of the Lord is powerful to save a person from the eternal sin and bring to the salvation grace of the living God. It is the power of salvation. Those who believe. Remember when you ask the Lord. To show me your glory. Moses was telling God. Lord I want to see. The power. That is vested. In your name. The third thing. The graciousness of God. Our God is a gracious God. Psalm 145. 8 says the Lord is gracious. And full of compassion. Slow to anger. And great in mercy. A gracious God. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18. Therefore the Lord will wait. He may be gracious to you. And therefore he will be exalted. That he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. Blessed are those who wait for him. Children of God, when you struggle in your life, wait on the Lord. Our God is gracious. Our word is full of compassion. Joshua chapter, Jonah chapter 4, verse 2. So he prayed to the Lord. You know the story of Jonah. He said, oh God, Lord, was not this that I said when I was still in my country. Therefore I fled previous, previously to Tarsus. For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God. So Nyona was having a very sweet conversation with God. I know your quality. I know your character. You cannot be angry. You are a gracious God. You are a forgiving father. That is so comforting for a child of God. You are slow to anger and abound in loving kindness. One who relents from doing that. Thank you, Jesus. Because of his graciousness, we are not consumed. Psalm 111 verse 4 says, And he made his wonderful work to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The last thing that is the component of God's glory is that he is a compassionate God. The compassion of the Lord. Moses wanted to see more of God's compassion. Because he was a compassionate God. That's the reason he called while he was, you know, just taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. And in the scripture, Psalm 103, verse 19. As, for, as the father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. The Lord will show compassion for those who fear him. God's glory is the revelation 
of the compassion of God. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The compassion of the Lord is renewed on a daily basis. Some have said it is new every morning. Hallelujah. You remember? Glory of the Lord filling the temple when they were dedicating the temple. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. You can see what happened when the glory came into the temple. This church is asking God, Lord, let us experience your glory. Let us see your glory. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven. And consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. They were ready to see something supernatural. They were in one spirit and in one accord and in one place. And they prayed. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord. Because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. We are going to experience something extraordinary in that. And you may not be able to stand in the presence of God when the Lord is revealing his glory. When you come into the presence of God, ask the Lord to show me your glory. And all the children of Israel saw how the fire come down and the glory of the Lord uh, on the temple they bowed their face to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord and saying, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. There is nothing else. They wanted to praise God. They wanted to glorify his name. They said, God is good. They don't want to remember anything about the bad thing. They want to say, God is good and his mercy endures forever. They started praising God in one accord. They started lifting their name. Nothing else. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. That is what the request of God, request of Moses to God. When the Lord said, this is what my glory is all about. It is the sum total of my compassion, my power, and my graciousness. Everything has been capsuled as one. I'm going to close this message saying how to tap into the God's glory. How can we tap into God's glory? The first point is Look for the glory. What we need to do? Look for the glory. You remember Stephen was stoned to death. Nobody was there to support him. He was struggling with this cruciating pain. Every stone was he's hitting by the stone. Acts chapter 7 verse 55. But he being with the full of Holy Spirit gazed into the heaven and he saw what? The glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. When you look for glory, you will find the glory of God. Agape Church family, when you come into the presence of God, what are we going to look for? You're not going to look for your neighbors, the, the dress, the beauty of their dress and the hairstyle and the cloth they wear. You 
look for the glory of God. Stephen was struggling to sustain his life. There was nowhere to look. Enemies had surrounded him with the stones. And he was all alone. No place to look. He gazed towards heaven. When a child of God is struggling for your life, you are attacked by the enemy. Your heavenly father cannot stand. Sit. When Stephen was looking at the heaven, God revealed his glory. That means God revealed his power, his goodness, and his graciousness. It was the sum total of everything that God is all about. And he saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So that took care of all his pain. And the joy has been reestablished in his life. He become a martyr for the living God. And his glory will give you the courage to stand strong for the power of God. And for the presence of God. Hallelujah. Look for the glory. You will see it. Moses wanted to see the glory of God. He asked Jesus, he asked the Lord, show me your glory. Exodus chapter 24, verse 16 through 17. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it with six days. On the seventh day, he called Moses uh, out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. And God revealed his glory. And you will be consumed in that glory and there is nothing else for you to remember. And you will see the beauty of the Lord. Just like what we sang today, we will say, Oh Lord, you are beautiful. Oh Lord, you are beautiful. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 13 verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. The glory of God will lead you. Direct you. You always come as a different on your way. And by night a pillar of fire to give him light so as to go by day and night. Look for the glory. Secondly, pray for the glory. There is nothing wrong in praying to the Holy Spirit. Lord, send your glory. Romans chapter 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Paul said, the suffering is nothing that I am expecting. The glory of God must be revealed into our life. Moses asked, please show me your glory. On the day of Pentecost, the Lord Jesus asked the disciples to wait to receive the power. You know the story. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. They waited. And when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all in one place, in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. They filled everyone those who were sitting there. They started speaking in unknown tongues and they experienced supernatural things. The Lord has revealed his glory for those who waited for the glory. So pray for the glory. The third is prepare for the glory. The Agape Church family, the Lord is bringing this message for us to get prepared to receive the glory of God. 
Romans chapter 5 5 says now hope does not disappoint when you prepare it will never disappoint you because the love of God has been poured out into our heart by the Holy Spirit who was given to us prepare for the glory and finally walk in the glory this way we can tap into the glory of God look for the glory pray for the glory prepare for the glory and walk in the glory 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we will with unveiled face before as in a mirror the glory of love glory of God and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the Lord what is that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us this morning show me your glory there is a phrase from a movie it says show me the money right you know that phrase the worldly people may say show me the money but for a child of God what are we going to ask show me the glory that is what Moses wanted the Lord said Moses I'm going to show you the glory and the sum total of all my power sum total of all my compassion and sum total of all my graciousness that is what my glory is all about Agape Church if you are asking the Lord show me your glory the Lord will never 